Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag Hashtag W-A-W. What a week. What a week. Week. Hey, Ta, hey, Ta, hey, Ta. Welcome to Wow, What a Week. This week, we've got a guy who was kind of quiet in school, but now makes crowds of people laugh. And he's got the most, like, 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 uh, but I assume it's his manager. Jeez. <laughs> we'll serve a woman who makes being a mom and an entrepreneur seem almost easy. And someone who didn't let a few biological and cultural issues get in the way of forging their career. Make way for some mid-month motivation. Welcome back to Wow, What a Week. This is... Wow! What, what a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. Some people get their inspiration from watching movies or other performers. Our next guest said he got inspired by watching a comedy show in 2010 that was called Bafana Bafana at the World Cup. It was a funny show. Since then, he's made moves into the Premier League of Comedy. So please give a wow welcome to Dylan Oliphant. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My dude. How are you? Are, are you wearing your Man United uh, top because it's still too early? To call it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like people ask me, is is my is my wardrobe like Pepper Ends? You know Pepper Ends. You know the show Pepper Ends. Pepper yes, Ends wore the true. same outfit every. They ask me, is my wardrobe oh, like Pepper Ends? It's like, do I wear Man United things every single day? And I must say, at least six times a week. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> And then on days that they get towed, it doesn't happen at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you post a lot about soccer. Like, yeah. You post a lot about soccer. I am a huge football fan, but I'm a bigger Man United fan. I love Man United. Since I was like 10 years old, I've been a Man United So at the time you were a Man United fan, I mean, who were the big stars at the time? Um, David Beckham. Yeah. And Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes. Paul Scholes is my favorite Man United player of all. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is it about Scholes that sets him apart from everyone else? I mean, uh, Man United has literally like a, 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 a truckload of legends. Paul Scholes, firstly, is a he's a ginger. Um, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's like there's only two great gingers: um, Paul Scholes and Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, and Ed Sheeran. Sorry about Ed Sheeran. No, no. And uh, Duran Collett, who used to read uh, Sport at Five FM. Okay. Yeah. So four. And so Sears. We, Sears du- Duplessis. I know, also. Yeah, I, I love gingers. I love their biscuits. All right. So um, I, my favorite player is Paul Scholes. Paul Scholes was, he could pass the ball. Yes. Uh, and he could shoot the ball too. He could pass and shoot and control the tempo of the game. I'm sure. That's my favorite type of player. A player who can pass, shoot, and control tempo. So, so you grew up in uh, El Dorado Park, uh, yeah. south of Johannesburg. And often a lot of people use the culture for comedy. Yeah. But for instance, even within the cultures, the subcultures. So for instance, there's colored folk from the Cape. There's colored folk from the south of Jersey. In essence, what would you say is the difference between you guys? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of difference. Um, the people in Cape Town have the ocean. We don't have the ocean. We have... Or oh, the ocean, if you will. <laughs> we have Brie. Brie, that's the... <laughs> we don't have the oceans. We have yeah. and, we, and our accents are different. Our accents are definitely different. People sure. from... Uh, from Cape, because people always come up to me with the Cape Town accent. I'm like, bra, we don't. I, I'm not that color. I, I'm not that color. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not from. I'm not from Mitchell's Plain. People even ask me after shows, "Are you really from El Dorado Park?" I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, where in Cape Town is that? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, if there was to be a fight, who would win, Cape Flats or Eldos? Cape Flats or Eldos. Um, well, all our all our best gangsters have passed away, so Cape Cape Flats. So the, you guys ran out of gangsters. We, we, yeah, we ran out of the best ones. But why 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 didn't you like someone take over? <laughs> was there no succession plan? <laughs> no, we 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 try to raise we try to raise teachers and pilots now. And now yeah. the comedian is coming out. Yeah, and comedians and which we are not kill each other. Your your comedy has evolved though, mm-hmm. you know, from your come up to. You know, going on the road with Trevor Noah, if you want to name drop another <laughs> yeah. colored 
<laughs> Tell us about the evolution of your your comedy. Uh, well, I started out as like a, uh, started out in Soweto. Yeah, it was my first. So you crossed you crossed the, the, the freeway basically. Yeah, <laughs> I actually stay I stay in Soweto. I stay in Club Spread West. Oh. So Club Spread West is is Soweto. Oh, so you can cross the. Uh, and then go back home basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I am from, I always tell people I'm from Soweto. I, at least Uber drivers. I used to tell Uber drivers that because they didn't want to go to Elders and they're like, where are you from? Where are you going? I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to Soweto. <laughs> and then they're surprised. I remember back in, I was probably 98, 99, mm-hmm. um, driving a little green golf and um, met a girl that I liked at a club in um, Pretoria. And she asked me for a ride. I'm like, where do you live? She's like in Midrand. So we're driving, you know, I'm taking her home to Midrand. And she's directing me. And as we're driving, I'm like, we've passed Midrand. She's taking me to drive a race. <laughs> yeah. So, so I became quite a regular in Rabi <laughs> I thought I was going to be <laughs> Don't say you live in Midrand yeah, if you live in Ravi Ridge. Yeah. Come on now. Now, one of the big stories in the news is what's happening in Saudi Arabia. Um, apparently, Neymar um, has been uh, given a massive deal by, is it Al Hilal? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, he's been offered, apparently, amongst other things, a Bentley Continental GT, an Aston Martin DBX, a Lamborghini Huracan. And uh, he's also ordered four Mercedes uh, G wagons, as one does. <laughs> I was going on record by saying that if there's a job in Saudi Arabia that requires me, I, 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 I'm, re- I'm ready to convert. I don't think they're looking for Indians <laughs> yet. <laughs> I, I already, I already, I'll convert. I'll convert for, I'll, I'll convert for a Rolex. What, what are your thoughts on uh, what's you know, it's, it's so-called uh, sport washing? Yeah. When people are saying the Saudis are throwing money at sport. Uh, to, to def- sanitize to sanitize the record in terms of human rights and 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 freedom of media freedom of speech etc i mean part part of it i think is is right but then also if you want to play the money game europe has been playing the money game for years now they've been sanitizing uh, the last <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it's time. <laughs> now it's time for for brown people to join the game. <laughs> you know they think we've forgotten about the last five hundred years because yeah. they let us in there to play soccer sure. with them. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> anyway, so what have you been up to? Because I'm, I'm, you know, are you on the road? Are you recording? Are you performing? What's happening? Um, I'm, I'm always one thing about me. I'm, I, I believe in like the craft of stand-up comedy. Yes. I'm always on stage, night after night. I love stand-up comedy, um, so I'm always on stage working on my craft, and I'm definitely planning a few shows. Okay. For for later on in the year, yes. Later on in the year is when. So is there, there's nothing oh, yeah, yeah. coming up. I've got a show. I've got a show at the Artistry. Okay. From the third of November till the fifth of November. Oh, nice. My own show called Massacant. So is it um, part of the Goliath uh, comedy it's, thing that are doing, or is this your own thing? It's my own show, yes. Oh, ah, show. I've been okay. venue and I'm doing my own show there. So, And I do, I'm, I'm big football, so I do football content, Man United content all the time. Yeah. And so I'm just creating content. So, so what kind of Man, Man United content do you do? Well, I do previews and reviews. Okay. They both... It's about Man United, but it's comedy. It's yes, not, sir. It's yes, mostly sir. comedy. So, so which first game videos. have you done like views on already? I've, Let's I've, talk about the previous league because you guys didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we know that result. My thing is this: when when my my previous started when Man United were like at their worst. Yeah. Jose Mourinho had just been fired, and that's when I started making the videos. So my videos come from pain. And like you know, the best comedy comes from pain. The best comedy comes from the best comedians know what pain is. So, yes, sir. so I chose Man United. Man United is my club. Luckily, it's a club that has pain. We've, we've been struggling since 2013. It's just been, it's been a rough one. What do you think it's going to take for you guys to bounce back? Um, I yeah. think we should join the Saudi Arabian League. <laughs> <laughs> Let's buy the whole thing. <laughs> Come on, join the Saudi Arabian League. <laughs> uh, now, one of your famous lines on social media is "fuck Michael Owen." <laughs> t- t- tell us about that, because you, um, you fuck Michael Owen quite a few times. <laughs> uh, fuck Michael Owen came from. Michael Owen used to be a man. United. He used to play for Liverpool, yes, right? Yes. Uh, you know Liverpool. The 
My team, like, yes. So be careful. You support just... Liverpool, oh, sort of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah, Lever- so Michael used to play for Liverpool, and then he joined Man United after playing for Real Madrid and Newcastle. Yeah. You went so, to retire. Yeah. He came to you. No, he came to United because Liverpool couldn't give them trof- couldn't give him the Premier League trophy. Oh yes, 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 yes. Because yes, yes. Liverpool only has only like one one in like thirty three years. Well, it's like one. In- the okay, interviews all about <laughs> the next case. <laughs> I think it's like one in 33 years. I, it's so many, I can't count. Right, so then um, Michael Owen joined Man United and we gave him his first Premier League trophy. And I feel like Liverpool still hasn't said thank you to us. I feel like the Liverpool fans should be... On behalf of Liverpool fans, <laughs> you, uh, for, for giving him a dignified retirement. Yes. Since yes. we couldn't offer him that. Yes, yes. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, that's okay. okay. That, you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, finally. Finally, I'm glad this is going on record. All right, so then he moved to Man United. Yeah. And then now he's a pundit. Yeah. But he acts like he's never played for Man United before. Oh, so you feel he doesn't acknowledge the fact that you guys give him a bit of a dignified exit? Yes, we... we, we we took Michael Owen in at Man United when he was a broken man. We literally gave that man his... We, we took him in when he was a broken man, bruh. We took Michael Owen in when he was at the roughest of times. No one wanted Michael Even Michael Owen said in an interview that um, he, when someone called him, when his agent called him and said that Man yeah. United wanted him to join, he couldn't believe it. Yeah. And that's Michael Owen. That's Liverpool's all-time top. Is it Liverpool's all-time top oh, scorer? Oh, is that worth is that uh, that coloured rap song? Uh, Owen, what? <laughs> <laughs> it now makes a lot of sense. Yes. Anyway, so one of the big stories that came out at the weekend. Um, so DJ, somebody was tragically assassinated uh, in a hail of bullets, and now it emerges. His business partner at a yep, yep had him insured, I think, for 15 million rand. Yeah. And there's been a big uproar about it, but I don't understand why there's a, it's a big deal. People do this in business all the time. I think it's called key men insurance or something. Yeah. So, like, the, the Goliaths, I'm sure they've all insured one another. <laughs> <laughs> one has been insured against heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, uh, Donovan. Is, is Donovan the one most likely? I think Donovan is <laughs> short against death by hair gel. <laughs> 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 He's the other one's been in sure because it's very light skin. You know, very light, very light skin. skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I don't understand the big deal. I think people are treating it almost like it's a conspiracy. Yeah. That you took out an insurance on your business partner and they died. Now you want to pay out. But you see, the thing is, like, right after. People are still, we still have PTSD for, for, for Senzo. Yeah. We yeah. still have PTSD for Senzo, so we're worried. <laughs> you, you think someone took out insurance on him also? You never know. No names, man. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names. So people are still like, uh, so everyone, and also, um, there's also this thing going around that women just want men for their money. I'm not saying that it, that it, that's how it is. I'm not saying that. You're not saying which woman. I'm not saying which woman. I'm not yeah. mentioning names. So people, so people have that in their minds too. Sure. In terms of money and security, you know, but do you like worry about the future, life policies, um, investing, putting money away, or are you living a joke at a time? <laughs> <laughs> like, living from job to mouth. <laughs> Uh, I worry about the future. Yes. Yeah. Uh, definitely, the future is, is something, that we, especially as an entertainer. Entertainer, how can you not be worried about the sure, future? Sure. You don't know when people will stop finding you funny. Absolutely. You don't know when you're going to be the guy. Just You don't know when you're going to be Bill Cosby. <laughs> okay, maybe Bill Cosby is a horrible uh, uh, example. Uh, 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 Sorry, not Bill too Cosby. Too Bill Cosby is a horrible example. Even your girlfriend is not impressed. <laughs> shaking her head. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> so, Even yeah. she's like, I don't know when he is going to stop being funny. <laughs> <laughs> I need insurance on this guy. <laughs> Does having a girlfriend that beautiful come with being a funny guy? <laughs> or you've always had game? <laughs> well, I've always been funny, so that means that's... It's is that is that you saying to her if you leave there's someone we on still Look, in a relationship, are you allowed to test drive your material on your partner? Do you do it? 
or is home a no jokes zone? <laughs> well, she always says that I should I should try it on her, but I feel kind of awkward trying even just like on on one person. Yeah, I I I I, I think comedians we 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 really want our validation from an audience. Okay, so not from a partner. Not from not from one person. Okay, she, she already loves me. So Those the strangers sitting in the in the in the in the crowd. Yeah. That's the people I need to fight. To because not. they owe you nothing. My partner's gonna be like, yo, yeah, I like that joke. Yeah. After gigs, she asks me like, why didn't they like that one? I'm like, hey, maybe maybe you looking at it with your reaction. Like, yeah, baby, maybe next time tell it while you're eating because when you yeah. tell it to me, when you're eating, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! Yeah. I don't know if you grew up in an era of pen friends or not, or pen pals. No. Okay. If he doesn't know what a pen pal is, he's too young. <laughs> <laughs> I know what a pen pal is. <laughs> so there's these two uh, women. Um, one I think is from the U.S. One is from the U.K. They've been writing letters to each other. I think for since 1950s. Sure. So girl guides, teenage girl guides. They've been writing letters to each other, and they finally met this week. After writing letters every week. In fact, I'll tell you now how long they've, they've been doing this for. It's actually, the reason I'm telling you the story, because I had pen, pen friends, and I'll okay. tell you about it. So they've been writing for, to each other since 1955. Yeah. Yeah, and they finally met this week. The that's crazy, and they were the real people. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've watched a lot of catfish. I was the I could not, I could never write letters. Actually, one of them is a Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, uh, I didn't know you were. <laughs> and they've been writing to each other since they were twelve. So I had pen friends when I was in grade ten, grade eleven, and I was actually going through a rough patch. Yeah. Uh, because I'd broken up with my girlfriend. When you're 15, that's like the world. <laughs> yeah. My mom had just moved to the U.S. to study. My best friend had relocated to Norway. Yeah. And so we had a... Yeah, you had a white friend? <laughs> he's actually black. Oh, yeah. Uh, his, his mom married up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, let me take all of y'all that side. <laughs> To Norway. Exactly. So, so, so we had a school visit uh, from Machabing High School in Lesotho. Okay. And um, there's a girl I met. And I liked her. Yeah. But she pen friend zoned me because... <laughs> pen friend zoned me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were killer bitches of the so It's not like anything could have happened. So I'd actually like to shout out Puselezo. Okay. Because at a time where I actually felt alone, yeah. you know, we wrote to each other every single week. Sure. Every single week. I think because when I watch when I watch catch catfish, I realize that those people just want a connection. Just a connection. That's all. That's all. And at least I met my connection. So yeah. I knew it wasn't a Nigerian prince. Yeah, yeah. yeah trying yeah, to yeah. give me money. It was a Lesotho prince. No. Princess. Princess. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. In fact, in fact, the, the, the thing is, we wrote so much to each other because she was from Soweto, but she went to school in Lesotho. Okay. So when she was on holiday, I'd change the address. <laughs> Not right to in in, in, in Soweto, yeah. 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 <laughs> so sh shout out Pusele, so thank you. You are you were hoping, eh? <laughs> you were hoping she change her mind, eh? No. <laughs> no. You're like, hey, I'm gonna get out of that zone. I will get out of this zone one letter at a time, bruh. I will be out of there. Dude, my letter should be sponsored by Pete. Because <laughs> I went through a whole box of fucking things. Those are writing letters. But anyway. So where do we find you on social media? If we want to support your career, we want to get in touch with you. I am at Talent Willifant. Yeah? At Talent Willifant. That's no one bef before, because I, cause I know there's another Talent Willifant on, on social media, but he's in jail. Right, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, here's a Talent Willifant. Exactly. His name is spelled exactly like mine, but I'm but just a verified one. I don't know. Ah, know. I okay. A, I got a blue thing next So to his me. is spelled how? T H A B O B E S T E R. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. No, no. I know that. He's Dylan Wally Fan 28. <laughs> that's easy. That's easy. I'm Dylan Wally Fan. I'm the only Dylan. So, so when you guys get confused between yourself and the Dylan Wally in, in in prison, like how do you deal with that? How do you... 
fix that to differentiate between he actually he actually messaged me same people message him asking him about how his how his career is going and how's comedy doing and they really love his work i'm like oh, you are having the you loving the wrong work so how is his career <laughs> it's like hey i've been doing this for 12 years now going on 15 you know what it is <laughs> How about your own show better? So I hear you're a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the best selfies, bro. I'm like, yeah, that's the best present selfies I've ever seen. <laughs> like I said, T H A B O B E S T E R. I know that Dylan Oliphant. We all do. We all celebrated his birthday live on camera while he was in prison. Oh, uh, fuck, man. In terms of the work that you've done so far, when do you stop name dropping, for instance, that I toured with Trevor Noah, uh, some of your milestones? I mean, you, you've got a ton of milestones, yeah. including one man shows. Yeah. Is it a thing that you either name drop or you put in, like, do, do you ever say to your woman, hey, baby, you know, I, <laughs> with Trevor Noah, I almost went to the US. With it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for that call. I'm still waiting for that call. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should put my phone on silent like I do. Well, maybe the visa arrived, but they spelled my name wrong. They call, they came me, da- they call me David Kabuka for some reason. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I'm not a. I'm, I'm not a name dropper. I'm not. I'm not a name dropper. Trevor Noah told me not to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck me! Listen to it. I've been a fan of your work. Uh, we just wanted to hang out, you know, yeah. just talk shit. Yeah. Uh, see which, which girl you pull up with in this time. <laughs> <laughs> last time it was someone else. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> last time he was alone. <laughs> the previous five interviews. <laughs> <one man. laughs> I see now you shaved it down, seemed him up a bit. <laughs> Made him a bit funny, so well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> She saved me. She saved me, bro. <laughs> Brother man, thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Man. We will check you out on social media and we'll see you at, at the Artistry. Artistry. From the 3rd of November till the 5th. 3rd of November? Yes. So you've planned that far ahead? Yes, yes, yes. Jeez, I don't know what I'm doing next week. <laughs> 3rd of November. <laughs> I, I play on like international fixtures, right? Man United, they play. Uh, and yes. then when the Man United don't play, that's yeah. when I do the shows. <laughs> is, Man, is Man United taking the league this year? Is Man United taking the league this year? Probably not. Probably yeah. not. I don't think we have the... I think we maybe have like third place. I'm, I'm so so if you place. could fix shit at Man U, what would you do? Get the Glazers out. Glazers oh, shit. out. Okay, Glazers. now you're stuck with Malcolm. What are you going to do now? <laughs> um, <laughs> we... Fix... Glazes out is the most important thing. Yeah, I think yeah. glazes out is the is the is the. So so, thing. so are you gonna change from fuck Michael Owen to glazes out or fuck the glazes? We can do both. We can do both. My my, I've got I've got a lot of hate to share. Ah, yes, 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 yes that's equal you, opportunity. Uh, hate. Yes, yes, that's how you hate. You you don't just hate. You yes, hate. Yes, you hate yes. proper. And no one should le- feel left out. Yeah, no one should feel left out. But yeah. for now, Michael Owen is the biggest villain. Still. <laughs> After the Glazers. After the Glazers. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, a Glazer hater. <laughs> yeah. Just like the Titanic is a Glacier hater. <laughs> Make some noise for Dylan Oliphant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is. Wow! What, what a week. What a week. This kid. Yeah! <laughs> really kicks welcome to this kid really kicks ass Uh, this is where we speak to people under the age of 35 that we feel kick ass some people inspire you to look good while others inspire you to feel good our next guest does both and this in addition to looking quite slick herself in fact she's so glam her kids probably have more followers on instagram than most of us please give a wow welcome to tseho manche manche (laughs) Manche Adewale. <laughs> oh yes, Manche Adewale. Thank you. That is such a good intro. <laughs> How are you doing? Zoho? I'm fine. Uncle Fresh. <laughs> Only Uncle Fresh. Abu <laughs> Tato. What do they call you in the street? <laughs> Whatever works for you. Yeah. What What do you call hubby when you're mad at him? 
I don't call him anything. I just okay. look at him. I give him that one look. Yeah, he knows what you. Yeah, it's happening now. Now I'm gonna stop whatever I'm doing. Yeah. When you're really angry, do you like? Are you angry in English or Kasatswana? Kasatswana. It could not open. The accent flies off and then boom. You're not gonna go now. Oscar on Tetla and then yeah. And then what does he do? Does he call your mom and say she's shouting at me again? Oh no no no! That was for me talking to my kids. Oh, with my husband. Ish. I, I try to be submissive and gentle mm -hmm. and yeah. How important is it in a relationship or a marriage to draw that line between being submissive and being a walkover or being submissive and allowing yourself to be disrespected? Mm -hmm. So with submission, right? I always say submission is easier to submit to somebody who is leading, who's leading oh, yeah. who's so, submission. Sure, sure. So... If somebody's a true head in his in his in his ways, in his actions, in his in his tones, mm. it's so easy to be a neck to that, sure. to submit to that. Mm. So I don't think if somebody's being disrespectful to you, you would be submissive to them. Sure. So it's easy to be submissive to somebody who's yeah, respectful. That is that, that is earned it and they lead, like you're yes, saying. And they lead. Lead me and I'll follow. Mm? Not but, the blind lead. But but, but if you expect to be followed in JA because yeah, no, you can't expect to just respect is earned. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's one of the things my parents um, raised me with. And that's one of the things I I saw in my parents' marriage. I mean, my parents, they were called Jeffrey Palis for Jack's Dog, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, they were this two... The legendary. Yeah, the legendary. Yeah. <laughs> two couple who just were working hard together. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I know they started a salon together. They were one of the first Huisa from Gasi to Dorobong. Mm. And I saw that. I saw that journey. And I was like, this is it, man. This is it. It's, it's not solely about making money. It's mm. solely about building a legacy together. Sure. You know, building something. You know, your kids can look at you guys and see that, oh, there's love in working together. There's love in Absolutely. putting your passion mm. into something that, that can manifest into something greater. Mm. You know, mm. so... Yeah. The, the question I'm about to ask you, I'm asking because I can relate. Um, being a child that was seen as because your folks yes. had a business. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, there's pros and cons mm. to being mm. So, mm. for instance, for me, from as early as grade three, grade four, mm. school holidays were spent at the shop. Yes. Because you have to be packing the shelves yeah. or going to, uh, uh, you know, to a cash and carry to buy stock with my, my cousin. And I'm like, I'm a child. And I want to enjoy my childhood. My yes. friends are riding their bikes past our shop. <laughs> <laughs> They're riding their bikes past Are you coming? Shop. But are you coming? And I'm stuck there at the till because the lady who tilling is on her lunch break. Mm. So now I must be at the till, mm. but I can't take money because I know it's not my money. Yeah. Tell us about the pros and the cons of being the child of business people. The, oh, I can still remember when you speak about childhood memories that yeah. December was the worst time for me. Sure. Because how we were to school holidays, everybody's packing up and going on holidays. Mm. Runa, I mean, we had a salon. Sure. So salon was the busiest time for us, mm. you know, and uh, to see where everything, everybody was doing something, sure. you know. Sure. And that's when it taught me that, you know, you have to look at the bigger picture because my mom would always say, January at, sure. and we'll go on holiday. Oh, yeah, let's yeah, focus yeah. on this now. Mm. Let's, let's, mm. and we'll enjoy the fruit. Was always but after, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, I'm sure you also learned that you can tolerate the smell of chemicals for doing yes, at a very early age. <laughs> um, but um, the, 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 that was a con. Yeah. But also, I can say, as much as that was a con, it was also a pro because I learned that. With the good comes the bad. With work the bad ethic, comes the good. Work ethic, work ethic also. As well. So, and um, a pro was definitely learning the values of money mm -hmm. at a very early onset and mm -hmm. learning the ups and downs of life and business. At a, sure. So, our conversations, Kuta Fuling, would not be, how was your day? It would be like, I'd hear my parents have conversations about how much money did we make and why didn't we break even? Why didn't... So those conversations, hearing them speak like that, that was already formed in my subconscious that business is up and down. Sure. So it was, I was geared up when I went into business. I was geared up to understand, that, oh, okay, these are the struggles because I've seen my parents go through this. Sure. You worked retail when you were a kid. Yeah. Uh, you worked at Pulsate. Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, do you know that? Tell us about your uh, career in retail, wow. working at Pulsate. For those that don't know, what is Pulsate? 
Um, Paul said was um, a store in Santon. Yeah. It was one of the hot and happening stores then. and um, A clothing store. A clothing store, sure. yes. Um, I was, I was, um, just imagine this little girl, um, bubbly personality, yeah. straight coming from Klegstop, ready to take on the world, coming to Joburg. I always used to say I'm a big city, I'm a small town girl with big city dreams. That was the thing I always would say. And I, I never had this thing, I already know. I had this thing, I already, I can do it. Anything is possible. Sure. And I think I missed that about being young because when you're young, you always believe that everything is possible. In fact, the reason I'm asking you about mm. the time you worked at Pulse, Pulse 8 yes. is I'm told at that time, yes. you said out loud, yes. I'm going to own my own store one day. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Do you guys <laughs> Tell us about that journey from, I'm a teenager mm. working in retail, but I, I'm bold enough to say to everyone that, watch, I'm going to have my own store one day. Wow, <laughs> you got me by surprise. Sorry, we do our research. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, um, I knew that there was something different. Mm. It was something special sure. and it has something to do with fashion mm. uh, because from an early onset in high school, I'd be the first one coming up with the trends. People were like laughing at me mm. a month before. The next month, they're asking me, where did you buy that? Sure. So when I got to Pulsate, two weeks after working at Pulsate, mm. my boss flew down from Cape Town and he's like, who is this little girl making me so much money? Yeah. So you were moving stuff. I was moving stuff. I was mm. getting people inside the mall. I was going to people. Oh my goodness, you look nice. You need a jacket that would go with that. Yes, and yes. that's what, what I'm saying is that when you're young and, you know, you believe anything is possible. Mm -hmm. you, I, I was such a go-getter. I think I'm still a go-getter. But then I was just like, anything is possible. And I would say, mm -hmm. yes, I, I believe I'm going to own a store one day. This is my next chapter. And, yeah, the boss came down two weeks after and he's like, wow, tell me your strategy. Sure. And I said, my strategy is I want to be you. <laughs> tell me how you do this. Tell me how you do this. How do I get exactly, to that? Yeah. Exactly. But you, for instance, could have gone into the family business. I mean, I remember, I, I mean, I uh, DJed at your sister's news cafe yes. in, in Northcliffe. Yes. So you had options, but you still went and worked in someone else's store. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? Because life is, you know, there's opportunities, but you need to, um, for lack of a better word, you must you must fill out the pains of real work and sure. real labor. And they don't fall into the lap of the family. Yes. yes. Um, you know, um, it, I am very blessed to say that, you know, my family, they had a head start and they and they could help me. And my mom did help me start my business, La Manche. Sure. But she said, you have to know what you're doing. If you want to be in fashion, work in fashion. Feel it out. Understand it. There's, there's one thing, loving clothes. But what is the business of fashion? What does that entail? Did you understand what it feels like down there? Exactly. Sure. You know? Okay, so, so that was the strategy. That was the strategy. And mm. um, also, I wanted to have something of my own, mm. have my own legacy, something sure. that I can say that this is a start to something of mine that my parents built me from. Sure. Sure. When does hubby come into the mix? <laughs> How did you guys meet? Why does everybody ask me that? Because <laughs> we're nosy. Uh, yeah. And um, we like things. You know, Happy comes in the mix. Um, here's this girl, a uh, lady at the time. Yeah. I have a store. I am. I have nine employees. Mm. I am, literally, I am going through the most. Mm. I just got through a bad breakup with a user guy mm -hmm. so sorry god forgive me but um and uh you know i'm i'm, I'm struggling in business at the time mm -hmm. uh i'm struggling to stay afloat i have oh. i i uh new entrants came into the market zara river island and because la march was the first brand where all the women would come to mm -hmm. for the first trendiest items for the mm -hmm. most amazing pieces so that was what people would come to La Manche for, and that was my clientele. So when when all the other international markets entered, I didn't know what to do. Oh, yes. I was stuck. And that coming in cheaper than you. Yes. I was stuck in my personal life. I was stuck in my business life. And you know what? I, I kneeled to God and I said, God, if all else fails in my life, let love not fail for me. 
because I'm a lover. I I love hard. I love deep, and I can't live without love. In company, I, and my husband Law said this all the time because he says you're lying. Where there's where there's um where there's love, that where there's no money, there's no love. I said no, honey. Mm. Me, I can eat like pap and yeah. nothing. Like no sauce, no milk, no nothing. As long as can I talk a you know. Yeah. So I said that to God, and I said because I can't focus on my business if my personal life is. You know, and he comes in and we meet and I'm going through all of that. Sure. And, you know, what is amazing is, you know, when you're going through life, going through difficulty. Sure. It's so amazing that um, you can see love through difficulty. You can see love. And I'm so glad that I, I decided to recognize that. Sure. That's why it's so important to manifest. Mm -hmm. I believe so much in manifestation. Same here. Um, because... I wouldn't have been able to see love if I was not manifesting, saying, when love comes to me, let me be able to see it. When love, when... Uh, and often, when, a lot of the things that we w w want to manifest come at you disguised. Mm. Sometimes they're disguised mm. as work. Sometimes they're disguised as misfortune mm. even. But if you don't know you're looking for it, you're not going to see mm. it. Or sometimes it's, it's, it's disguised as, like, heartbreak. Sure. You know, like, you're looking at someone, you're like, eh, hey, 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 not on stress, you know? Mm. Kanti, love of your life, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So that's how we met. Mm. And I was going through that and I met him and he didn't know. Mm. He didn't know. And till today he loves saying that. He likes saying, you, you're this girl. Mm. Ah, you, I can't believe you didn't tell me what you were going through. Sure. Because that was my struggle. That was my thing. And I was like, I'm not going to bring that into my relationship. Mm. So, yeah, it, it, he pushed me without realizing. His love pushed me. Sure. You know, and later on he ended up helping me. And yeah, and we have. So you guys traveled to uh, the motherland, his motherland. Yes. And you had no idea he was as big as he was in Nigeria. Tell us about that moment when you realized that, oh shit, this, <laughs> this guy's a big deal here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we know people that know people. Okay, so, all right. Um, ish. So just think of this there. Yeah. Okay, here you are. You, you're a little girl and you're telling your parents that, hey, mama, I met this guy and he's from Nigeria. Mm. And back then there was a big stereotype against Nigerians. In fact, I was going to actually ask you that next because I've got a friend who was dating a Nigerian guy that kept it under wraps for a while yes. because of one xenophobia, the stereotype. The, um, they want to say he's a drug dealer. That time he's an academic. Exactly. You know, like, like, like carrying five degrees yes. and working towards the sixth. Mm. But because of all the stereotypes... Mm. You know, a lot of girls will not say, I love Jolof. Mm. You know what I mean? So so how easy or difficult was it for you to say to the folks? My thing is that my parents, I came at them that you taught me love. Yeah. You taught me love has no color. You showed me love. Love has no, no, no boundary love. So I said, Mama, this is my person. I introduced him to my mom first. Sure. I said, this is my person and he loves me and he respects me. And they clicked mm. off the bat. And then I said, if my mom and my dad agree, then... Yeah. After that. Exactly. And that was the verification stamp I sure. needed. So you traveled to Nigeria. Traveled to Nigeria. And I'm scared, of course. So how much did you know about how big or not he might be in Nigeria? I didn't know. I, I mean, at the time, he was he was saying, I'm doing music, I'm doing music. I, was, I thought, ah, oh, it's just a hobby. You know, he, you can find a demo. You know, he graduated. He has a, a, a BSc in ge geography. Yeah. He went to... Um, Lagos, Carnegie University of Lagos. Sure. So he, um, and he's a real estate mogul. He's that guy. He's driven, very, very driven. So I thought, oh, okay, he's he's focusing on different businesses. That's sure. what I thought. And I thought, ah, the music is a hobby, you know, and and then he's just on social media just to have fun. Sure. So I go, first thing first, I get to the airport. You know, there's like, um, cutting Mopo, what is it called? <laughs> Lack of a better word this mm. week. Um, blue siren car. Oh, okay, yes, so there's yes, a whole yes. more like, like cavalcade yes, waiting for you. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm being fetched from the aircraft. Like immediately when I leave the aircraft, I'm being fetched. I'm like, what the hell am I? Yeah. And then I'm like, me? Oh, okay. Yeah. I go, okay. And then I get there. He, he doesn't even come pick me up at the airport. I was so mad. He's like, but I organized a whole, I'm like, but I wanted you. Yeah, there was a whole <laughs> blue light brigade for you. I wanted you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I get there. First thing first, I'm like, oh, there's a hair lady I want to go to. Sure. I go straight to the salon. Some guy is doing my hair, and one gentleman's doing my hair, and he's shaking. And I'm like, Buti, 
what's going on? You know, I'm like, what's happening? He's shaking. He's like, um, uh, uh, can I have a picture with, with your husband? I said, I mean, boyfriend at the time. I'm like, wait, which boyfriend? Oh, Jim. I'm like, babe. Babe, Tom, this guy wants to take a picture with you, you know? He said, no, 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 don't call him like that. I'm like, I'm like, who is he? What's going on? He's like, do you, well, you want to, you're with one of the top 10 guys, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, eh? Yeah. Top 10? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, what is he talking about? The guy comes out with like all the staff members to take a picture with him. Oh, we love your vibe. We love your energy. You're such a good spirit. Yeah. We love that you're always happy. I'm like, I see them taking pictures. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> we go, we're in the car together. Yeah. We're driving. People are banging on the on the windows oh, of yes, the car yes, yes. to take pe- I'm just like, eh, hey, but yeah. uh, who's like? Who is this guy? We, so we get to the house. I'm like, now we need to talk <laughs> because what's going on, yeah. you know? And then it's just like, I'm just having fun on social media and pe- people gravitate towards that. Yeah. Yeah. So who is the big star between you and him? There's no big star. We're both stars. I think for me, he will always be the biggest star because he he's the star of my life. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You were very close with your mother-in-law. Like you were very close with your mother-in-law. Yes. And often, you know, there's a narrative that mothers-in-law are from hell mm. and we're from heaven. Tell us about your relationship with your mother-in-law. And 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 maybe learnings from your relationship with her may her soul rest in peace. Given that a lot of people have bad relationships with their mothers-in-law. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah, my mother-in-law was. Yes, may her soul rest in peace. She was. She was kind, you know, and she was. She had made a decision about me before she met me. You know, when someone decides that I like her and I'm going to show her. Yes. And that made it easy for us to get along. It, she never ever, oh my God, I cannot cry, please. She never made me feel like I need to, you know, there's that thing with um, in-laws. Maybe like, they might we're, make, we're fighting over your son. Not fighting over like mm. I, need to, I need to seek your approval. Oh, yes, yes, she yes, never yes. made me feel like I need to seek her approval. Mm. All the normal traditional things that, a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law would do. We weren't like that. We were, she would say, sit down, my daughter. Let me make you this. Let me teach you this. Let me, or let's go shopping together. Let's, we were, we were close. And even her daughters sometimes would say that, you know, the conversations we have, we, you know, how, how did I get, because she's, she was very tough and she had to be, you know, um, because she raised all four of her children mm. by herself. Sure. So she had to be tough and, and raise them to be great and, and all by herself. So with me, she was soft, you know? So they, they would ask me, how did you get her to be What have you soft? done to our mother? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I think it's because, you know, when you're a mother mm. and you, you're raising children by yourself, you have to be both the mother and the father. Mm. And you have to be tough. They have to be... So, Yeah. Yeah, it was what amazing. You, what do you miss about her? I miss um, the times when everybody's sleeping in the house and her and I just sit and have tea together and talk. I miss um, how she would always re- remind the kids and they were like young uh, that they must always greet with respect. You know, Nigerians, they prostrate. So she would always remind them at a very young age, prostrate, greet with respect. Sure. Um, I missed um, that she was very objective, very, very objective. She was not very subjective, like always on his side or my side. She was, no, you guys, this is the right way to do things. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I've traveled a bit of Africa and just, you know, you talking about how in our Nigerians greet. And that's the first thing that stood out for me, just in terms of how Nigerians greet and make you feel at home. Mm. And, and I was there for 10 days. And I think oh. we're visiting different places yeah. every day. Mm. And every place you go to, even where you can tell there isn't a lot of money here, mm. you'd be offered food, you'd be offered mm. something to drink, you'd be made to feel welcome. Mm. And that's the one thing that will always stand out for yes. me. Just about how Nigerians do mm. things. Mm. 
So anyway, sorry, I was just um, an aside. Yeah. So you get married, but within that wave of I'm um, getting married, you lose your mom-in-law, you lose your grandmother. What's happening in your head as there's so much light and darkness happening in your life? And at that time... Oh, yeah, nice rock. <laughs> Please hold up your rock. Speaking of light and shade, if ever there's load shedding, she just holds her rock up and it lights up the room. <laughs> and, yeah, at that time, um, the relationship was, like, you know when things are just not smooth, because life is never smooth, mm -hmm. but sort of like no bumps, you know, we're navigating life together. Homo and I, we're happy, you know, little bumps there, but not nothing to shake. Well, you guys are moving. Yeah. You're moving, yeah. And and then boom, we're, we're excited about having our third child and we lose his mom. Mm. And it was devastating, mm. devastating. Like, um, it's not spoken enough about how to support your partner who is grieving and when you're also grieving, but losing a mother uh, and I, obviously I can never say I und I fully understand, but seeing the pain in my partner's eyes um, and, you know, men are not, they, they don't easily talk. Men are not emotional beings, not not all, but mm -hmm. so it was, it was tough seeing him, being, seeing him going through that mm -hmm. and going through that together. And, and then shortly before I gave birth, then we lost my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was with my mom in the States, about to give birth, and Jeez. she can't be there for her mom. Mm. So, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a whirlwind, it was, but, you know, we held each other, like, the, mm. like, close-knit, all of us, and we tried to just be there for each other, mm. in, even in silence. You know, there's those moments, sometimes you think you need to say something, to, to, to have comforting words. And often opening your mouth will like you ruin the whole thing. Sometimes just keep quiet. Sometimes there's Be comfort the in silence. Yes, yes, yes. Just comfort in holding someone's hand. Mm -hmm. It's comfort in just brushing them like, sure. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I know what, what you're feeling. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. We'll go through it together. Sure. So, yeah. If they're having a conversation right now about you, what do you think they're saying about you? My mother-in-law and my grandmother. Yes. <laughs> I don't want you know, be <laughs> I think they'll say, oh, you're so busy. What's going on? One minute, call it reality show. One minute, three kids running up and down. One minute. You are busy. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I think they would be proud. Mm. And I think I can honestly say it's the craziest thing. And before, I think... I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about ancestors, and uh, but it's when I lost my grandmother that I started believing in ancestors because I actually could see my grandmother move in my life. And why I say this is that um, consciously there's been people yeah. around me, coming to me, near me, uh, working with me, who I can see that give out to all around me, and I can see that this is my grandmother's doing. Yeah. And um, just the strength that I have, I'm, I'm very, I used to, I'm a reformed people's pleaser. Mm -hmm. And I used to care about what people think. I used to care about what people say. And I can't say I fully recovered, mm -hmm. but. It's, it's tough. I'm, it's I'm, tough. I'm going through that journey right now. Yeah. It's tough. yeah. Because you realize that the boundaries you set, you're setting for yourself. And it doesn't make you a mean person. It doesn't make you a bad person. You're taking care of your mental health. But the weird thing, though, is as you're doing that, that self-love, mm. at the back of your mind, there's still a voice upset that, but well, I hope I don't upset them. I don't like what then. That's annoying, ne? You can get so that, bad at yourself. That I've been in control. I've been in control. Why am I feeling bad? Why am I feeling bad? Yeah. Stick to your guns. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I think, like I'm saying, is that I think that strength comes from my ancestors, from my grandmother and my mother-in-law. Because I didn't have strength before, mm. I think they've they they're guiding me to be the strong woman and to stand my ground. And 
be kind to people who you deserve my kindness. Kindness is you worldwide and you always be kind, but some people just throw it back in your face and your love and everything, you know? Sure. So I know now that I'm, I give my love to people who, who are ready to receive my love. Mm, mm, absolutely. The mommy club. What on earth is that? Better <laughs> what on earth is that? <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, we are out of time. They're shouting at me for the last 10 minutes now. Really? Uh, we must wrap it up. And I'm, I'm, I haven't even asked you 90, so 90%. I haven't asked you 90% of the questions I have in front of me. We're having such a good exactly. conversation. Exactly. The Mommy Club, what the is Mommy Club, um, you know, I had been previously asked to be on reality TV, yeah. and I was like, but this doesn't speak to me. This doesn't resonate with me. I need, if I'm going to do TV, it has to be something that speaks to what I am, which is a mom, a wife, you know, a boss babe. Sure. And they came up to me, um, Pop Zinzi from Pop is like, tell her, tell her. It's just it's like that. Tell her, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a new show. Um, I think you'd be amazing on it. It's about moms and just navigating their lives. We all see you on Instagram. We want to see how you guys do it, how you guys, what is behind the glamour. Sure. And I said, this resonates with me, you know, because they showcase being a boss babe, they showcase being a mom that struggles. And yeah, that's what the mommy club is about. It was a little bit of drama. So it's a reality show. It's a reality it's show. Yourself and who else? It's myself and four other ladies. Mm -hmm. Um Nunarai, Bumim uh, Happy and Radile. So who ought to watch the mommy club? Who ought to watch the mommy club? Yes. Um people who are like can I watch it? Like would it like would would, would I resonate with it? Oh, yeah, by the way, I watched the whole Housewives series. Franchise. All of it. I've watched every single Housewives. So okay. would I enjoy The Mommy Club? I think you would. I think yeah. it's an amazing show. I think it, it's, it's, it has moments of funny. It has moments of drama. It has moments of realness. It, um, pe uh, happy, especially, showing casing her life the most. And when I'm watching it and I'm watching how she's showing her life and I'm like, this is amazing because so many people can relate to different kind of moms on the show. So many people can relate to me as a mom, as as a boss babe, as trying to discipline my children and, sure. you know, as being a protective mom. And there's a different mom for everyone on the show. So definitely many people can resonate with it. And why watch it? I mean, it is a good ass show. And in closing, how do we support your business, your businesses? What do you do? Where do we find you? Closing, uh, La Manche, okay. www.lamancheofficial.com at La Manche Clothing. How's business? Are you getting love? Yes, on Motherland. And I'm like, this is what it's all for, you know, because you don't want to just be on reality TV yes. just for the sake of it. You want people to take from you and sure. be inspired to inspire it. And mm. also... You want the numbers to show on your right. business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I've been getting so a lot of support. Buying. People are buying. Yes, from Motherland Shapewear. Please support <laughs> Motherland Shapewear. So where do we find Motherland Shapewear? www.motherlandshapewear.com as well as Motherland Shapewear on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So what's the difference between that and La Manche? Oh, so the reason why I created the shapewear is because when you're wearing a dress, sometimes the underneath, the, it doesn't not, come to, yes, it doesn't come together. So the shape where snugs and fits tight. It, it, so it pulls married, you towards yourself. are married to each other. And what's nice is that now with La Manche, I've, I've had La Manche for 10 years. Yes. And you I, were a child when you started La Manche. Yes, I was a child. Yeah. And now I have a new business partner, Tiamo, mm. the retail girl. And we said, let's bring it back to the original La Manche client. Sure. Sure. The one who understood how women feel. Are they buying? The one who wants details. Sapotang, yay. <laughs> are they buying? We are relaunching okay. in October. So it's very exciting mm. with my partner. And we're coming back to the original La Manche woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How are you feeling right now about your life, about everything? This good. very moment. I feel good. I feel... Um, We're done. Don't shout at me. She's finishing. She's yeah. wrapping up. I Thank feel... You. I feel... Um, I feel like... It, you know, this is the time that I was supposed to come out. And I feel like people who understand me will understand me. People who don't understand me are just not meant to be my people. And the people who see me through the love I am, through 
I wear my heart on my sleeve through um, being emotional and mm. easy to speak, easy to listen, easy to forgive, easy to, to apologize. Um, that's what matters. And they see the boss babe, they see the wife, and then they see Mutuno. I don't have it all figured out, but I'm trying. Sure. You know? You're not hesitating. Yes. Yeah, and that's important. Yes. And, and, and often we don't move because we hesitate. Mm. And those that moved dared not to hesitate. Yes. So learn, I don't know what the hell I just said, but it makes You're sense. right. It does make sense. Don't hesitate. Rather look back and say, okay, I fucked up there. Mm. I'll do it better next time. But mm. don't hesitate. You can learn from this former child, started a business as a child, and uh, the woman is sitting right here with a rock. In fact, you know you need to tell hubby. You need another rock for the other arm. Because now you're working like this. Yeah? I don't put my ass off. Say, well, thank you so much for hanging out with thank us. You. you are an inspiration to a lot of people. Thank you. And uh, those in denial will get over it one day. Maybe how about Helen? How? What? No, you can't come to Satan and think you're not going to go to hell. But um, yeah, man, keep keep kicking ass, dude. Thank you. And 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 um, enjoy motherhood. Um, I think your three kids are lucky to have a mother as um, committed and passionate as you are. And hopefully they'll learn from you what you learn from Mama and Papa. Thank and the so fact much. that Mama and Papa will be also a legendary couple one day. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Thank that you was so manifestation. You just manifested on my children's lives. It's hey. done. Dad. Ladies and gentlemen, Seho is about to leave the building. The Mommy Club. Where do we see the Mommy Club? Showmax. Every Tuesday on Showmax. Do you guys fight? Do you throw stuff at each other? I wasn't part of my throwing moment. Okay, so but I was like, don't talk about my child. They were big fights. <laughs> exactly. All that passion also goes into her business. Yes. Please show her some love. Please support her. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Our celebrity guest is in the building. He's become famous for playing a defiant icon on screen and this on top of playing a number of diverse roles in his career. His family would say that's quite apt since he's also been a bit of a rebellious spirit since a young age, so we're told. Please give a wow welcome to Mr. Who Says You Have To Be A Zulu To Play A Legend. <laughs> Make some noise for Lemohang Tsipa. Yeah, Lemza. Yes, sir. What's up, my dude? Yeah, Pil, how are you? Sir? Hold on, though. Hold on, hold yeah. on. So, you... Where were you born? Let's just start there. I, I was born in Pangin. You were born in Pangin? Yes. Okay, so, you, so you, you, you're Zulu through and through? Yes, yes. I, it's, the, it's the most sort of African experience I know. All my friends from back home, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. But then, obviously, you, you have a non-Zulu name. Yes, yes, yes. It's because both my parents are, are not... Ah, in any ways. okay. Yeah. So where, where are you folks from? Uh, my dad is from this side. Both of my parents are from this side. Yes, um, sir. The side. Sure. Uh, my dad grew up uh, in Mami Lodi. Sure. Uh, and my mother grew up, I think, in the East Rand, like Springside. So, so, so how do they end up in Pangin? They both went to study uh, at the University of Zululand. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pursuing then pursuing their studies further. And, and then, then they met. Love happened. You know, university. And they're like, where must we leave? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, I think through, through the program, my father, my dad found a job early, and he was kind of the the person I think pressuring them to to move back. Absolutely, yeah. So, did you ever think it would be used against you that your surname might not be Zulu, but you were raised Zulu, Mus? Yeah, that was the, that was the first thought because I understand, you know, how big um, the king is. I mean, also growing up there, I understand how much people revere, yes, you know, such yes. a such a character. So I knew it was going to come with a bit of backlash, but you know, I was ready for it. So, so you are told, okay, you have gotten the role. You are going to play King Shaga. Yeah. What's the first thing you're thinking as you're told that? Well, you, you first don't believe it. You're yeah. just like, okay. Because, I mean, sometimes we, we do so many auditions and go through the process so much. Sometimes it does feel like a dream, you know, when you get that call. Yes, yes, Because it's yes, usually yes. early in the morning. It's the thing that wakes you up. But, you know, I was very, I was very stoked and proud because, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great moment for me to rep um, my hometown and uh, an iconic hero that's from very close to where I grew up. Yeah. And then, obviously, then people say, yeah, but Lemukhang is not a Zulu name. So how are you feeling yeah. as there's this commotion around you? I mean, there's, there's mixed emotions, but I mean, generally, I'm, I'm quite a secure person. And yes. I do um, understand that uh, 
even taking myself to the audition. I'll never audition for something I don't feel capable of doing. Absolutely. So I felt um, that I'm able to do it, and if they could also see that, ah, it's just noise. The rest of it. So you weren't worried because you knew that. Listen, I'm the best man for this job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was never, I was never worried. I mean, the, the only time I was a little bit worried was at the audition, seeing all the other potential shagas. Because if I was doing my one, I'd have cast each and every single one of the guys at the callback. They all had the the look. They had the part. Really great actors. Um, but yeah, it fell, it fell on my lap, and uh, it's my responsibility. When you do an audition. Yeah. Do you prefer a self-tape where you tape yourself and you send it in? Mm. Or do you want to see who you're up against and show up at the room? I prefer showing up in the room, seeing up who I'm up against, because there's times where it's both encouraging and discouraging. Yes. I mean, if you see the big hitters arriving in the rooms, you know, your, your Timbing Gorses, your Wise Mans, etc. Then you know that you're in the right rooms as well. Because there's other auditions where you know they're a little bit dodgy. <laughs> when yeah. you look at the room around, you don't really you don't really feel that presence in that way. So I prefer that. And as well, another positive with it, you get a lot of direction from. It helps know. when someone's reading for yeah, you. Yeah. As when opposed you can... to just your imagination. Because yes, yes. I could do it by myself, but sometimes you could steer it in the wrong direction with the right intention. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm proud to say my lady has got in a couple of roles with me reading for her during a self-tape. Yes. So if ever you need someone to read for you during a self-tape, you must call me. Trust and believe. Uh, because clearly I do something right. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go <laughs> all the way to Hollywood. <laughs> now, you're a child, you're nine years old, and you are diagnosed with ADHD. Yes. What kind of modern-day parents do you have that have you tested? Because... When I was a child, you were just told you're disruptive, you had a problem. Yeah, it was. I think it was a combination of the parents I had and the schools I went to. Both my parents were academics. Oh yes. Uh, my dad was a physicist. My mother still to this day is pursuing her studies. I think so when are you getting a, a second. when are you getting a real yeah. job? Hey, yo, it's, tough. <laughs> it's tough. I must still. There's a few after after season five of Shaga. Then <laughs> yeah, then maybe. Then yeah, I'll consider. But yeah. Um, my parents were very, um, very academic, very strict. But I think I was also, because they were such smart people and knew, they always knew that I was an intelligent child because mm. I was very curious, always asking questions above my kind of um, grades. And, you know, so it was, it was when I was not do, performing, you know, to the level of my capacity in okay. school. And that was just simply because I was just, my energy was not, I couldn't sit still, I couldn't focus on one thing. Mm. So mm. They, they, they realized, uh, they took me to these things and then they took me to a remedial school, mm. um, which was focused on kids with special needs of different like um, varieties. Uh, but that's where I kind of learned the skill of having to compartmentalize thoughts and, and oh, focus. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, so going to a remedial school worked for you then? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sitting here right now. <laughs> because, be, no, yeah. no, because often, yeah. I mean, I remember even when I was in primary school, mm. we had a remedial class. Mm. But because we're kids and we're dumb, yeah, yeah. you know, we'd always say the kids in the remedial class are the kids that can't keep up, yeah, or yeah, dumb, yeah. or, you yeah. know, you become unkind. Yeah. And, and that's what kids do. Yeah. The, the only reason I wanted to be in the remedial class was because the teacher was hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. We had we had a few good uh, good teachers as well. So, so that's the only reason I wanted to be in remedial class. But mm. for a lot of kids, because you don't get it, mm. we start being unkind to the kids at remedial, for instance. Yeah, no, it was true. But fortunately for me, I think the whole school was that. So yes. we never really got that... Um, um, kind of you attention. Have to deal and, with and that. Yeah, our yes. school kind of worked closely with, with real special needs school because most sure. of our, our kids was just normal um, ADHDs and like, yeah. you know, the dyslexia here and there, sure. nothing sure. super extreme. But then the, the other school was like, you know, people mm. with a bit mm. severer things. Uh, and they'd come to the school and then we saw those kids. But we saw, we all played. We were kids. There, was, there wasn't a lot of bullying or anything. Yeah, children are children. Yeah, yeah mm. in, in mm. environments, mm. Th at least primary school. So y your parents are, uh, you know, the academics, the highly educated, that driven and then when are you want to be an actor yeah uh, no. when did they realize that we've lost him um so it was a, a very very <laughs> tough time i think i matriculated 2008 yes sir uh, and 2009 i was planning on on going overseas mm. um to do like an exchange program but that was the year i think the the recession hit mm. um so the program that i was going to go with closed so i had a year to kind of figure out what i'm going to do got the odd job here and there uh, worked for my dad, went back to my old school, a bunch of different things. Um, so the next year comes time for me to study. My older sister, because yeah. uh, I'm the middle child, I've got a sister above me and one sure. below. Yeah. My older sister had just been dax of her school, Le Pepe in all A's, oh. studying actual sciences Jeez. at University of Cape Town. <laughs> 
And then I'm like, uh, you know, but I kind of leveraged um, my rebellious um, phase and, you know, um, character mm. um, with that year and told my mother um, in that year, because it was a stage where I just kind of sat on the couch at home and I told her, if I don't study what I want, mm. this is going to be, I'm going to be that guy at home. Jeez. Until I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> and they quickly they like, were like, Like, yeah. I'm not threatening y'all, yeah. but. <laughs> and I kind of I used, used a little bit, because she had always wanted to, which is the reason why she's still studying till this day, she had always yeah. wanted to um, become a doctor. Sure. Um, and at the time, circumstances, you know, didn't allow her to, to pursue her dreams. So I mm. kind of mm. manipulated her and said, Mom, what about me, you know? Yeah. You want yeah. me, and she. Yeah, fortunately, they 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 heeded it and and gave me the opportunity to to study. Okay, and to go study the arts. To study the arts further, yes, yes. After versus okay. being an academic like them. Yeah, no, no. It so so you know you 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 talk about how you were a rebel as a child. How bad were you? Uh, when it was bad, how bad was? Yeah, it? I, I never I never did illegal things. Yeah, um, but I got a lot of hidings. Sure. Uh, just okay, so you're a normal, African a normal, child. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I was just, I think it's because I was the only boy at home, so sure. my behavior compared to the girls was extreme. They were like, Oh, these other children are yeah. fine because it becomes chalk and cheese, yeah, because yeah. you will climb that tree, yeah. So, always my uniform would be dirty or torn yeah. at break. We're playing rugby, I don't have buttons. My mom's like, Why? Everybody's uniforms are fine. You <laughs> are you fighting at school? And I had a case when I was uh, in pre primary school, I don't know why, but I was. I I was, a, I was a bit of a little bully, so I think I carried mm. that energy a bit, sure. like with, with a bit of aggression and all yes, that sir. stuff. But yeah, it's behind me now. Your first role, was it while you were at AFTA or after you graduated? Yeah, no, it was definitely while I was at AFTA in yeah. the third year. I remember my lecturer um, telling us that, uh, or advising against, you know, yeah. um, working while, because a lot of people, if you, obviously the opportunity is there, this is what you want to do, they leave. Sure. So, um, yeah, I remember, I think I did a, a, a stint on a film called Felix, yeah. uh, done by uh, Penguin Films. I had like a small scene and one line, but sure. just, I was inside. I felt like, okay, I'm inside. No, your toe there. is in now. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it was a, it was a really great feeling um, to still be studying and, and, and begin doing that. And then I got a bit of momentum in that year. Towards the end of the year, I booked my first commercial, uh, which helped me... Um, when I got cut off, yeah. uh, survive. <laughs> when you got cut off, how? Uh, it was the last day of after. My dad called me, and mm. after is not the the cheapest of schools. No, no, after is not. Um, so he was like, "My yeah. my boy, you want this acting thing? I'm done. I've paid. Uh, yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> let's see." So, uh, so as soon as you were done at after, literally your, my last day. Your dad washed his hands. Yeah, he said he said I've educated you, go work which now. he he had. So it was a fair point. I went and printed CVs that day, and uh, yeah, I got a waitering job. I think the next week, just to make sure that you know, I can at least eat and balance. And then that commercial money kind of paid sure. the the. You know, it's rent. wild about you talking about CVs. Yeah. So when I started at YFM ninety seven. Yeah. Um, you were probably one or two. Yes. yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to tune in at the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did my CV, applied for my job at YFM, and I got a job. Mm -hmm. So I'm busy on a project right now, mm -hmm. and they asked me for a CV. Mm -hmm. I haven't done a CV since '97. Yo. That's the you see. That's what I like about our game. You know, yeah. a lot of it. Often your work speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to write it on papers. People will see it. And, and so I'm stuck. Like, so I must do a CV. Where do I start? So I went to Google how to make a CV. Yeah. So now I've got a CV. Chat GPT <laughs> as well. <laughs> and I mean, you, 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 you've definitely been in the game enough for Chat GPT to have the info on you. No, so no, no, no. Shame. She spits it out. Yeah. No, no. She spits it out, and she spits more than I want. Yeah. <laughs> At least you spit. Trust. So you then are on your own. Yes, sir. Did you ever want to turn back and say, fuck, maybe I shouldn't have taken this there path? Were, there were definitely moments where yeah. of doubt, because, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a, an easy game to navigate. And I always liken it to, like, being Tarzan and swinging from vine to vine. Sometimes you let go of a vine. You yeah. don't know. Your eyes are closed. There's no vine <laughs> coming. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you plummet and almost touch the ground, you grab another one and swing. That momentum takes you even higher. So, yes, yes. I mean, there's been a lot of challenges over the years. There's 
been um, times where you know uh, things have been financially strenuous, but fortunately, I've never been at a point where I haven't been able to to sustain myself or have yeah. to um, literally switch to something else. So I've always had something industry related that kind of pulls in and so, so, the so the talent and the gods always show up at some yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And also, I think a bit of the the inner drive. I'm looking at this card reminds me of. Uh, a, a little side job we used to have with my friend uh, over here who came yeah, with me. Yeah. Um, who leads, uh, we used to work sound for this lady who used to pay us, I think it was like 200 bucks or 300 bucks, like a session, and we'd oh, come wow. and connect sound and like all this. But we'd fetch the dodgiest bucky. <laughs> I'm telling you, Fresh, it was wild. Like the door didn't open, you had yeah. to enter through the windows. Oh, wow. It's the, the, you know, when the wheel alignment's off and it's driving on an angle like this. So we, we did a bunch of things to survive, but I mean, it was all of those things to just keep us in the spaces and, yes, sir. you know, interested in, in this. Tell us about working on the Dark Tower. Ooh, that was a, a crazy moment. That's so, what I'm asking you about it. Yeah, the Dark Tower, so it has a precursor story and then the, the story to the thing. Okay. The precursor story started when we were in varsity in third year. Um, one of the, the lecturers at school got an opportunity um, to, to cast extras sure. for Long Walk to Freedom. Yeah. Um, and so obviously she came to me because I was a very energetic kid. Mm. And, um, the, Yo, the HDHD was on steroids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it worked in art school to my benefit. So they're like, yeah, you're the perfect kid for this thing. So yeah. um, I pull up to this thing, and it's long walk, and Idris Elba's there, whatever. So I'm literally an extra in that back. So imagine a setup like this podcast. So is there a scene where we can pause and zoom in and we'll no, see No, 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 no. Shit, so, so we I'm, don't even see you. I'm trying to explain the context. <laughs> So you see how we're shooting here. Say, pretend where Idris Elba were behind the behind the scenes. There, I was oh, an extra because wow. it was a, a scene where he was shooting a, a news casting scene, and I was one of the crew. Members. They made me a cable bash. I was just oh, happy yes. to be in the room and watch him perform. But I remember. Is your name in the credits? Nothing. Fuck. So at the end of that movie, at the end of his scene, he's yeah. like getting escorted by his, you know, I don't know if it was a bodyguard or some some other guy who's also big like him. He's yeah. taking him out the room, and I just jump in between that guy. And <laughs> <laughs> and I hold his hand. I'm like, my brother, in the next four or five years, me and you are going to work on something together. Shut up. So Dark Tower was that moment. So, so Idris Elba says what to you as you he's, he's bypass shocked, security? But he's, <laughs> he's shocked, but he's also like, I mean, it's obviously a safe environment. I wasn't yes, coming yes, there yes. with like a guy. You're not an anything. assassin or anything. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I'm shaking his hand, and he just kind of gives this look at me, and he's like, Okay, I'll see you on set, you know, kind of in a, in a weird way. So that's five years before, before the Dark Tower. And then Dark Tower happens. And then uh, I remember at least there now, I've got a speaking part, you know, I get to hang out with yes, him yes. at lunch and stuff. Did you remind him? I did. And he remembered me. And I oh, was like, shit. oh, man. <laughs> and the crazy thing is that same year, I, I got an agent in the UK, which happens to be the same agent as him. Oh, so wow. it, was, it was a really crazy full circle moment. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the, the, the gods keep showing up. No, they do. They do. And they keep blessing. And we're receiving all of them. So when you work on a, a show like uh, The Dark Tower, yeah. you know, star-studded, mm. it's a proper production. Mm -hmm. What do you take from such... An environment. I think you just learn what's possible with scale and, and budget. There was a scene we had to do. Um, there was about five uh, big uh, South African actors, you mm. know, Mary Twalas, you know, Warren Masemulas, etc., um, who were doing this thing. And uh, th it's a scene outside. It was raining that mm. day. And mm. in my mind, usually rain days are paydays because it's like you, you got to cancel. You know, we're here. We already came to work. It's a free payday. No, no, no. no. They brought a cherry picker, which is like this crane that has this screen yes. that covered a set that's bigger than the square behind us. Oh, wow. just, <laughs> just an umbrella. And I'm like, yeah, because they can afford it. Yeah, There's and, a budget. I, and then I'm like, and then the sound, they're like, don't worry about sound. We'll ADR everything. I'm like, man, man this is so wild. You yeah, know, it was, yeah. it was the first time, you know, experiencing such a thing. Because I'd worked on a few um, local productions at the time, mm. but nothing of this magnitude. So it was, it was. So budget can fix a lot of things. You can, there's no excuses. <laughs> Once you have budget, you can do almost anything, anywhere. You we know? will build a ship and we'll sink it. At the Titanic in real life. You know, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a, it was an amazing experience and a, a very humbling experience to to see and learn that. So, you know, 
I became a fan of your work when I watched uh, Beyond the River. Oh, thank you, thank you. Because um, I was like, who the hell is this kid? Yeah. This kid kicks ass. Thank you. Take us through Beyond the River. For those that haven't watched it, yeah. please watch Beyond the River. Yes, Beyond the River is one of um, the most inspiring South African stories. Yeah. It's based off a true story of the first uh, black and white guy to partner up and win a gold medal in the Doozy Canoe Marathon, sure. which is like the comrades of canoeing. Yes. It's a very very tough thing mm -hmm. um i uh, how much of it, it did you do oh it felt <laughs> like we did the real thing it felt like we did the real thing because we shot over we shot over about five six weeks and then the actual race footage we had to do in two weeks yeah so but it's every day there was sure. a day i don't want to lie i woke up at four five went to set at about six yeah. all i did from six to six was run behind the car Yo. <laughs> the whole day and then the next day it's canoeing so it literally felt I didn't have a Fitbit or anything but sure. I think we we probably did the equivalent P of that marathon please next time take my Fitbit if you're going to be doing running and canoeing yeah a, a lot of people think he looks good in uh, Shaka Ilembe mm. that physique is from the canoeing guys trust <laughs> me and beyond the river that was the first can i tell you like in the preparation of that thing that was one of the most challenging if not the most challenging preparation things mm. i've had to do mm. for a film we had to learn how to canoe now sure. canoeing looks easy it looks like you're just sitting in a boat it's like learning how to ride a bike the sure. whole balancing mm -hmm. and holding your core it's a completely different and movement. remembering to stay holding yeah. and then after you've learned on flat water then you go to those rivers yeah. where and then there's the rapids it's not the and same then there's a rock you know what I'm <laughs> so um we were doing about three hours of training a day so we really really got into great shape doing that how important is discipline mm. in what you do because often you know, we look at actors and say, oh, wow, they did all of that to prepare for this little role. Mm -hmm. But to get there is a lot of work. Mm. And that days you wake up and you don't want to get fit. Yeah. Discipline is everything, man. It's the, yeah. it's, the, it's the fundamental, I think, of our game. Number one, our, a lot of what we do is very aesthetically driven. Mm. So once you've got that discipline in place and you've, you've kind of locked in what you want to look like, I'm not saying everybody has to look like, you know, mm. Vin Diesel or whatever. Sure. We all have to look like, you know, regular human beings. With but once you find your, your vibe and your niche, your discipline will help you maintain that, mm. which will keep you... Um, hireable, you know. It's, South Africa is not as free as America, where like they do that whole crazy body transformation thing. Sure, One week sure. you're dedicated, yeah, yeah. now you're mm. buff. We're not really big on that. So if you maintain a really good aesthetic, that that keeps you hireable. And, and, and surely because it's a small industry in mm. the bigger scheme of industries, mm. that you have the discipline mm. is the difference between whether you can make it in Hollywood or not. Yes, yes. Because yes. at some stage the call will come yeah and are you that guy that we can count on mm. to transform if we need you to transform yeah. yeah you know are you that guy that we know runs his lines and is ready mm -mm. and also the market is so the, the world is so small now man and yeah. everything's being watched by everybody i remember some south african productions i think it was queen sono taraji p was losing a mind of a poltusi's performance uh, mm. i think it was but i don't know but there's a lot of you know basically we're interconnected across the world now so sure. the biggest directors from japan to Mm. Hollywood to wherever can w watch your work and a lot of it um, a lot of what we do you can't really hide behind absolutely you know have you had any people you know fanboy or fangirl over your work and you're like oh shit okay you're watching um, kind of but I, I, I kind of forget it I don't know I'm very weird about that yeah. <laughs> stuff I don't like that kind of attention I mean mm. it's, it's it comes with what I do but I don't really try to feed into it but I have had moments where you know, some greats. I think there was a time we did a play at the Market Theatre and mm. uh, Silo Makekangube pulled up and, yeah, he was very impressed with what we are doing. And I was like, you're not nah, a legend. Yeah, you're not yeah, a, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, but yeah. yeah, there's been a few moments like that through the career. Um, but I'm very grateful and blessed for those. How important is it to not forget the stage? Oh, the, the stage, I think, is the fundamental. It's yeah. kind of where, where we exercise the muscle of sure. acting. Mm -hmm. A lot of time on screen, a lot of it is, is a lot more technical and nuanced, so sure. you don't really get to sometimes get into the depth, but it depends mm -hmm. on the style of the writing, the piece. There are some screen pieces that are 
um, very challenging as sure, well. Sure. And but I think yeah, theatre theatre is definitely one of the fundamentals mm, um, mm. of of what we do. I mean, what this is what we do is birthed from theatre. Sure. Before. Um, cameras and stuff came out that's how acting existed was on sure. stage so yeah. it lie and it's not going anywhere so uh, i think absolutely. it's important for every actor to visit it once in a while before we talk uh, shaga yeah. um, may i just please indulge me i need to make a phone call quickly okay uh, she's one of my favorite uh, zulu girls actually we're calling we're calling uh, brendam tambo one of the hottest voices on the continent. Not only to show off that I have her on speed dial, but also because she has a show coming up. Oh, fine. Why is she not answering the phone? Huh? Hello, Brenda. Hi. I was like, why are you not answering the phone? What's going on? Like, are you blue? I was me? answering. It, it just rang once. <laughs> so, so, so our, our, st uh, our guest in studio today um, played your king in Shaga Ilembe. We're hanging out with Lemohang Zipa. So, Bona Prenda. Hello, Lemohang Ujani. Yeah, Pilu Jansis. Yeah, Pilu Jansis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. Like, so b because uh, yeah, you you don't have the king on speed dial, I figured the <laughs> uh, might be able to. <laughs> you figured. Let me sort you out. Girl. E exactly, Brenda. You've got Thanks. a show. You've got a show coming up, and we'd like to buy tickets for our viewers. Um, if you'd like to go to uh -huh. Brenda's show on the second of September, uh, please just uh, put your name in the comments. That Brenda tickets, please. But also please subscribe if you've subscribed you stand a chance of winning tickets. Where is the show happening, Brenda? The show is happening at Gorif City Lyric Theatre on the 2nd of September. Okay. It's a decade experience, so it's a beautiful, big production. I actually took your advice fresh. I, I, you said, Brenda, do it big. I'm doing it big. <laughs> so, so, you, doing that, so, so, you, um, so, so you listened to me? I did. Remember, I sat down with you on that chair, no, I remember. and then you asked back. Yes, yes, because I remember yes. even after the show we attended in Santon, I said to you, no, Brenda, no, no. Yes, you did. No, you did. Like, we need bigger and shows. Yes, this one is a bigger show, big production. It's in a big auditorium. It's beautiful. We're putting all the stuff for you guys to come and enjoy the show. It's going to be super amazing. I have an eight-piece band with a brass section. I, it's it's, it's really going to be beautiful. I don't like to blow my own horn so much, but really I'm, I'm putting together something really incredible. The reason we have a brass section is so that we don't blow our own horns. <laughs> <laughs> well. Brenda, where do we buy tickets? The tickets are available at Web Tickets or Pick and Pay. Um, alternatively, you can book them through my office, info at mm -hmm. but it's easier to just book them on, and, on web tickets or pick and pay. Okay, so I'd like to support your business, Brenda. I'm going to buy 10 tickets uh, for five ah! of our subscribers. So, I mean. so please subscribe and just uh, put Brenda tickets, please, in the comment section. Uh, five of you will get a double ticket to, to watch Brenda live in please. concert. Lyric Theatre, 2nd of September. It's going to be an incredible show. She's a great voice. She's got a gift that you need to experience in person. So please, let's support Brenda and let's pack out the Lyric Theatre. Brenda, we love you and uh, we'll see you on the 2nd of September. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for supporting my business. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being a good friend and a brother. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Love you, Brenda. Uh, that is Brenda Mdambo. So you're on set of Shaga Ilembe. Yes, sir. Tell us about day one, because it's a massive production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Day one was, was, was the most chill day for me. Yeah. I was coming in. I think they started um, shooting a bunch of other story stuff. So all I had to do yeah. was come in, put on my costume, come to set, and say hi to people. <laughs> so it was, it was beautiful. But it was a crazy experience. Did you have to be in character as you walked in? As in, were people bowing as you're walking? A few people <laughs> did. But for me, it's still a weird, <laughs> it's still a weird thing. I think this is, this is one of the, the first characters that, that has drawn um, quite a massive response from, from, from people. So I think... I think 
Yeah, it's a, it's a strange thing, but a few people do. I, even in the building where I live, the concierge at the door every time. Well, I went over the but you know, I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. But I guess it's. So what do you say? If I hear the door, yeah, <laughs> I gotta find a response. I gotta find a response. Yeah. So you're on set. Yes. You're busy shooting. Mm. And then the Zulu King shows up on set. Ooh, that was a crazy like, like, come on, dog. That was, but that day, so that day was the, the if I can speak about it now because it aired this past week. That was the day um, after we shot the scene where Kendiani dies. Sure. So me and Umtu are covered in blood. Sure. Like fake blood. And it's sunset. The king just arrived. He's also running on a tight schedule because he's a king. He's got, you know... King He's got king to stuff do. to do. <laughs> you know so now we're trying to wrap up this side and catch the golden hour, but it was very cloudy and extremely cold. Yeah. Um, so the clouds, are, the, one, of the, one of the key things in the show, I'm not sure if a lot of people have noticed, is the backlight. So we're trying to like always have it backlit. But because of the clouds, the sun was gone. So we're just covered in blood waiting for the sun to come out. Jeez. Eventually it does come out. We get the shot. Then we rush over to the king side. The only thing to wash, because literally we don't have resources. We're in the middle of the bush. Yes. Like, they want to put a shower there, but they can't build a shower every mm, time we must mm. move from this hill to that hill. So we had a bucket with water that was warmed 30 minutes ago that traveled on a gravel road, because <laughs> that's where the generator. So we had to kind of bucket wash ourselves um, and then and go meet, meet, the, meet king. the king. <laughs> and so we, we fortunately got w to meet. W when did you find out that the king is there? Was it before the scene or during the scene? So we were told in the morning that that's the day the king would oh, arrive. Oh, so you knew the king And then we were going to wrap early yes. and, you know, meet him. But then the, the guard worked against us with the sun and made, yes. you know, that scene. But it turned out extremely beautiful. I mean, I, I saw a few reactions on Twitter uh, with that scene. Actually, not a few. A lot of people were very sad. Yeah, this, this scene that, from yeah, this past yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. No, no, just for the record, I haven't started watching it Ooh, because yeah. I I want to watch the whole series yes, in yes. one sitting. Yes. I, I, I can't wait a week. Yes, yes. Don't no, make no. me wait a week for no, anything. No. And that show, trust me, that's one of the first complaints of people because yeah. it's so good. Sure. A lot of people are like, man, why, why are you guys not dropping two eps a Sunday? At least? Something. <laughs> like, yeah. do a double header. Yeah, no, but soon, soon, soon it'll be. It'll so you be meet the king? Fun. What did you guys talk about? If at we, all. We never really got to, to have a chat. It yeah. was more of just like an introduction. This is the guy that's going to be doing the thing. And then um, the praise singers kind of came through. And yeah. it was more of a kind of a prayer to, to, to the ancestors and, and asking for, for a blessing. But sure. we haven't really had a sit down yet to chat. The other actors did have a chance because while I was covered in blood, he was there and they were not covered in blood. On oh, set. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and got a chance. And Dan Dozondi got to chill with him. And Was it not one. wild, though, that yeah. you are playing? Playing his great 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 grandfather, and yeah. I got meeting him. Yeah, yeah, like, no, that's, it's, some, that's wild. It's, it's 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 a crazy experience. I think it was the second kind of time that that happened to me. The first time I was on Beyond the River because yeah. the guy who was playing was still alive. Oh and yes. I was like, dude, this is I'm supposed to be I'm you. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this was kind of connected to that, but obviously on a different scale because he represents so much, and it's also not just anybody's grandfather it's a king's grandfather yes, yes. so it's in every history book you know about it's, africa it's a guy that trended around the world before twitter exactly you know, so exactly yeah. so you unfortunately are not only playing a legendary african leader mm -hmm. but you are also now supposed to remind us that forget about Henry Kale. Yes. I'm here now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that pressure. <laughs> no, that one, even I haven't. I love Henry. He's, he's my favorite. For know. a lot of people, yeah, he is yeah. still King Shark. No, definitely. Yes. And, I, and I understand um, a lot of their perspectives. Um, a lot of nostalgia. I mean, there's, there's certain moments where things hit you in a, in a particular way where you can never re-reach that point. I remember one of the first films I watched in cinema was 101 Dalmatians, and for me, it's still a classic. Yes, 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 Some, yes. I can show it to you, 2000 miles, you'll watch it, but I know this movie. Don't, don't get it. Yeah, yeah, but it's because, you know, the time it, it hit and yeah, what it represented. Yeah. I think when that film came out, there wasn't a lot of imagery of strong black people, you know, mm, in the media, and mm. he wasn't just a fictional character. This guy existed and yeah, he knew yeah. it, so that pride and all, all of that for, for a lot of the people that are a bit older and got a chance to experience that. I get it. I get it. I hate him. So, so, so when you are playing a role like that, yeah. do you watch the old series? No. So, Or the, do you go in with 
zero context of what else has been done before. Mm. I mean, the, the, the old series was extremely etched into my mind. It's mm. something I'd watched over and over again okay. um, growing up. But, but then but you're watching it for entertainment, not, yeah, not for, for reference. Not for reference. I yeah. think what, what we were also trying to achieve with this one was completely different. Mm. In, in that one, we kind of find Shaga in his complete state. If he sure. was Goku, he's already a Super Saiyan. Ah, uh, yes, you know? yes. So in this one, we're just trying to explore the human being behind that mm. and building up to that and also kind of shifting where that was because a lot of how that w that story was told was from a European kind of gaze. Absolutely. So from this one, we're trying to look from within out. So a lot of our sources are from, you know, family members of, you know, the royal house uh, on both sides and a bunch of historians and all of that. So mm -hmm. I think ours is, is a little closer to home and a little closer to, to, to the truth. Who he actually was as opposed mm -hmm. to the to the myth and the, you know, yeah. The, yeah, the man, the myth, the legend. You know, yes, yes, yes. Ab ab absolutely. Mm. So how important, just in terms of, obviously, that's where we're shooting, mm. this is the story we're telling, mm. where we have to be authentic. Mm -hmm. How much pressure are you feeling during all of that? Or for you, it's just, this is a gig, I've got another movie I'm shooting soon. No, no, the pressure, the pressure was extremely massive. I mean, number one, Home for me is KZN. Yes. So if I mess it up, you can't go back to Ah, Japan, what am I gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> That's my Christmas is done, you know. <laughs> and Zulu people are very proud, you know, yes. of who they are, and sure. rightly so. So for me, there was a massive responsibility to get it right. There was a yeah. massive responsibility to portray um, him also as a human being, you know, um, in a correct. Um, kind of manner, mm. which I feel, you know, we, we got as close to it as, as we could, you know, yeah. Tell us about the physicality of the role, Ooh. getting ready yeah. for the role. Yeah, no, getting ready for the role was a process. So mm. Shia, as, as a lot of people know, was six years in the making. Mm. So there was a stage where um, I think... When did you audition? So I, I only auditioned the year of it actually being made. Ah, uh, okay. But okay. before then, we'd always get things of, okay, the brief is going to come out, boys, get in shape. Yo. So for oh, so you were warned. Yeah, so for two years. But I think it was kind of like a thing, a rumor going around in yes. the industry yeah. of the, the boys, especially Zulu boys. Hey, it's time for six-packs, Chance. Let's, yeah. Yeah. let's not mess around. So Now you know why the gym was full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, guys, <laughs> but uh, Twitter's thanking us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was it was it was a hectic it was a hectic thing. So we were getting like all these like kind of murmurs and, and things. So I got into shape a few times. I'd get into but and getting into shape is so much work, man. And even just like the maintenance of eating. For me, I'm not generally like a yeah, big guy. Sure. So to maintain a massive size, I gotta eat so much. Yeah, which yeah. for me just means I gotta cook. I don't mind the eating part, mm. it's the cooking. The prep <laughs> no no meal prep is Yeah, it's, you know what I mean. It's a slip, yeah. So that whole thing, um, over and over again but once once it was kind of locked in they gave us about three months to to really hone it in a bit more mm. but already at that at that first stage i felt the pressure from the other chains because the yeah. senses were coming the temple i'm like yo he's james <laughs> <laughs> and then so when 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 we when i was given the role um there was the whole debate of the the story they they, they didn't know if they wanted to keep the same actors for you know, the, the young part, oh, the middle yes, part, and yes. the old part. Yeah. And then I told them that I, I was willing to do the whole American body transformation thing. And they were like, okay. Yeah. So they were trying to crunch things with the schedule to see if that was um, feasible and mm. whatnot. And eventually we reached a point where they'd worked it out to be like, okay, we can't do this. Okay, so so for those that don't know what you're talking about, well, how yeah. does that work? So for the teenage saga, the opening mm. parts that you've mm. seen the last two episodes, yeah. eight and nine, when I first arrived, um, Shaga's a bit smaller, sure. and I literally lost weight for that. I Jeez. went down to about 68 kilos, mm. and then... So how does one lose weight fast? What did you do? I just don't eat and Shit. cardio. <laughs> it's so, not... So you're running on an empty stomach? Literally, it's not, it's not the vibes. I was so cranky. I was so... Yo, man, it was a very hard time. But yeah. I think but in that time, it was almost like a fasting process, which helped me really focus. But it's also back again to discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no. and, and, and I, I, I always argue this. If you can control your need for food, mm. you can actually sharpen your mind for a lot of other things. No, true. I think that 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 for me was one of the things that helped me focus the most yes. in that process. Learning new movements, stick fighting is not something I really grew up doing. Sure. Um, 
I mean, one or, once or twice with boys messing around, but it wasn't like a religious yeah, on a Friday yeah, thing. Yeah. You're not an expert. Yeah, yeah, so we had to learn that from scratch. Obviously, with the spear and shield, that was day one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So all of those movements and, and having to not just accomplish the movements, but look like a hero, you know? Yeah, and the thing yeah. is, a lot of people have seen the Jackie Chans and the Tom mm. Cruises. So also in an indirect way, you're competing with John Wick because now I've seen the standard of action is here. Sure, you sure. can't just... You know what I mean? You can't so, half ask it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there was all that pressure as well, as well as also representing Africa, knowing that this is going to go out to the world. Mm. And this is what people are going to deem as the standard of African cinema. So sure. to get all of those things right, it was, uh, yeah. Okay, so teenage Shaga, you had to run and not eat and lose all that weight. Mm -hmm. How long did you have to get back to... Hey, so that one, it, was, it started... As a as a dream, it was. I think it was eight weeks. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yo, hey, let me change things about. Oh, for two months. <laughs> but see, you no, know, six weeks. Yes, I think it, it ended up at five, um, and five wasn't a lot of time mm. um, to to really drastically get a change, but. I had a really great trainer, Bruce, yeah. uh, and they also gave us a great nutrition plan. And um, so, okay, so what? So, so for five weeks, then you have to rebulk, yes, and train, yes. Jeez. So I'm I'm training movements because now I've, when I was skinny, I'm doing the stick fighting. Yes. Now when I'm bulking, it's time for spears because yes. he's grown now. Yes. So I had to do that while bulking, while learning lines. Yeah, oh, it was. Yo. Yeah, it was a very tough time. <laughs> very, very tough time in, in life, but it, very enjoyable as well. Uh, in fact, speaking of enjoyable, I'm sure your lady wasn't complaining about your physique. Oh, no, she loved it at the time. She was, oh, man. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, we get into arguments about, when's that guy coming back? I'm like, no, I need, to, I need to take a break for now. I need to take a break for now. For me, I don't want to... I don't want to risk, because I mean, we train like athletes to, to be able to maintain our physiques at that level. Yes, yes. Um, so, and athletes are always prone to injury. I mean, right now, Kevin DeBrain is out because mm, of the hamstring mm, or whatever. Mm. So I don't want to suffer that. And for us, I don't get paid by Man City while I'm injured. You I'm, you're, I'm you're on the bench. You're not getting a million rand yeah. a week. <laughs> I'm on the bench bench, yes, you know, yeah. so I can't afford uh, an injury because my body's how I make my money. So right now I'm just on a bit of a break and just slowly working my way back up. Oh, so Honey doesn't get the physique anymore? Hey, man, it's, uh, uh, it comes with six meals having to be cooked at dinner. <laughs> and someone must pay for it. You know what I mean? So, so for me, I think we'll, we'll both enjoy this break for now. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, we're going to play a quick game. It's called uh, When Last. Yeah. Uh, when last did you pray? Yo, when last did I pray? Yeah, what did you pray for or about? Ah, it's probably for food. <laughs> <laughs> May God bless our food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're that guy that just bless the food at, at the very well, least. Uh, yeah, yeah. At, at the very least. But it's not, it's not a habitual thing. I mean, I, I used to pray a lot, but for me, I don't know. I think God, God and I are in a, in a good place now. Mm. Uh, mm. Where we, we, we sp I don't really pray, I just speak. You know, sure. Kind of, yeah. When last did you feel gratitude or feel grateful? Oh, every day, man. Sure. Every day I wake up. Um, I think driving here, I saw one of the billboards, which is just a reminder. I was like, man, yeah, yeah, I'm doing this thing. And, you know, it's... it's How does it feel right seeing direction. yourself all over town? It's surreal. <laughs> it's surreal. But now I know that, ish, there's a few things I won't be able to get away with sure. anymore. Uh, Anonymity out the window now. Yo, yeah. ish, before I used to, I remember when when cops used to stop me, uh, I used to always say it's my dad's car. Now yeah. they know that it's, they know it's you. It's me and it's mine. <laughs> so yeah, hey, yeah. When last did you drink until you were crawling? No, I don't do those. <laughs> you things. don't do that. No, 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 no. No, no. Your mother and father are not watching this. Too, no, they're right? watching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. Me, I drink holy water. When last did you fear for your life? When last did I fear for my life? Yeah, hmm. if at all. Yo, that's a good question. Um, I think the day that explosion happened mm. in Joburg, I was like, yo, hey, any, any time it's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't even need a war. You can just be buying fruits and it's over. Oh, man, you're an actor. Me, I thought when you heard that explosion, you'd think, fuck, what set is this? Nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some are too real. We're like, no, no, no. I don't know if Avengers were shooting in town. <laughs> sure. Yeah. When last were you, were you in a physical fight? When Lost was in a physical fight, probably yeah. on set of Shaga. Like, yeah. uh, like a fight proper or acting? 
I, no, I'm talking about uh, proper. No, we we went at it with the gent. You're lying. No, but it wasn't. It was no, but I don't know if it was a fight. But we had blocking, and the man wasn't getting his blocking right, and it entered on me. So hey, I gave I gave some back. You're lying. <laughs> no, but it wasn't deep. The, the way no, we, it was deep. It the, happened. The way we did it was that it was in the context <laughs> of the fight. So um, it worked for the for the shot. It worked for the screen. But yeah, for me, I, I thought he was supposed to miss. He didn't. So I also me, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know, calculated. I wasn't yeah. trying to, you know, hurt his career. When last did you worry about where your next meal is coming from? Yo, that's it's been a it's a hey, COVID actually. Mm. COVID on a, not a literal level. Sure. On a literal level, it was probably when I when I was starting out acting, mm. eating more vites, breakfast, lunch, and supper. <laughs> but uh, right now, it's been. It's but more vites slaps more. differently when the sun is setting, though. Eh? No, no, it does. The ta- the taint. I used to even get I buy the banana and the pineapple, and then you know you switch yeah, up the plate <laughs> and you mix them up in the evening <laughs> for the fruit cocks. <laughs> Hey, times have been tough. When last did you ask anyone for a selfie? Maybe have a fanboy moment yourself. You yeah, have. I've never. Yeah. I'm always shy. I always, you know, I'm always empathetic. Now, now that I know what it feels like with anxiety, sometimes you try to read somebody's energy, but I've never really um, asked somebody for, for a picture. I don't, I don't like... You, you're not that guy. Well, for me, I know that my face and my body will get captured via mm. my job. So mm. uh, if I want to know what I look like at 21, sure. just look on the CV, find the thing, mm. you know. So mm. I'm not really super big on pictures, but yeah. When last were you anxious about anything? Oh, I'm anxious all the time. I'm anxious mm. when I leave the house. I think this job makes me anxious. Um, knowing, you know, now the, the level of fame that I've kind of um, acclaimed from this role makes sure. me very anxious because different people look at you for different reasons in different ways, you know. Um, yeah, for me, it's just a constant thing. But I, I've learned to live with that. Mm. Yeah. And when last did you spoil yourself? And how did you do that? Oh, yeah, it was like a week ago, yeah. two weeks ago. I bought a camera, yeah, because I need to start capturing the content. People started telling me, hey, you're a star now. You can't just shoot with your phone. So I'm yeah. like, okay, got a camera to, to shoot and capture, yeah, all the, all the moments. How oh, about your phone also works most? No, it does, but, hey, you know, people, they say it must be 4K for a documentary years from now, and I'm like, hey, okay. My phone does 4K. You can use it. Hey, sure. <laughs> we don't have the same phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine... Uh, <laughs> There's levels to this life. I'll get there. I'll get to the problem. You're a king, my man. No, no. For me, yeah, I'm a king. But hey, for me, I don't know. I, I, fi- I find it hard to buy really, really expensive phones. It's like it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, they it get lost. Sense. And for me, I also lived in an area where, I, on a daily basis, I used to witness these phones snatches. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, 35 k yeah. just like that. And hey, if this wasn't on contract, I wouldn't have bought it. Yeah, it doesn't make me. sense. And I don't like contracts. I don't like anything tying me to. I just like yeah. in and outs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. In fact, speaking of in and out and contracts, when last did you feel like maybe I should propose now? <laughs> to get married yeah. or to propose <laughs> to uh, an idea? No, I don't not know. an idea. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd like to get married. I'd like to get married very soon. Yeah. Um, but not soon as in like tomorrow, but mm. yeah, yeah, at some point. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, it's just, I'm t- I'm, I don't know if I'm going to, being a public figure, there's the pressure of having a public figure. Me, if it were up to me, I'd go to home affairs, sign. So do that. Go home. Ish. I must have a conversation. I got you. <laughs> when, when last did your folks reprimand you for anything? Um, you know, it's actually been a while yeah. since Black Tax came in. The complaints are few now. But I think during COVID, I was with my mom. Yeah. And we lived in the same space, so we... we How did that feel? Hey, it was hard. It was hard there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, Shay, my, my, my father's late, so my mother's um, um, living alone uh, yes. uh, a lot of the time. So I felt, you know, in that, in that time of us not really doing much, mm. it would be great to just kind of be with her. Um, but, yo, hey, we clashed. We, we had... What was yeah. the biggest thing you guys clashed about? I don't want to say on this platform. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a lady. Fortunately, Mpangani is a small town, yeah. uh, and there are beautiful women in Mpangani, but the ones in my age range are all married and, and gone away. So 
I was just, it was just me and my mother. Mm. But yeah, I think it was just being in, in a confined space for too long. She hasn't really let go of that whole, you know, thing of being I'm a kid. Mother. And me, I'm used to, you know, my own freedom. So that thing of like even coming home at 12, she'd kind of look at me. I'm like, mom, if mm. you saw what time I come to my apartment in Chobek. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah. And I'm your child, but I'm not a child anymore. I'm not a child, you know, so, but yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Losing your dad in 2017. Yeah, t- yeah. Take us through that journey, because it's a journey. Yeah and, yeah, and you never really finished that journey. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the hardest thing I think I've experienced so far in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it happened while I was busy. It was like in a year where I was on a roll, sure. like work-wise, booking a bunch of stuff, and I was busy shooting uh, East Tempest, I think, at the time. And then simultaneously with another show in Cape Town mm. uh, that's on Netflix. Sure. Um, Anyways, um, it was just hard, man. I got the news. I think I was in Pretoria visiting a friend, mm. like just having vibes, you know. But my dad was already sick. He had had a heart attack early in the year mm. in the hospital. So I thought the call that I was going to get was that, oh, he's home now, whatever, sure. whatever. Because mm. my mom was trying to really be optimistic. But it was hard, man, to have to um, deal with all that stuff. I didn't have a lot of time to, to, to really mourn. I couldn't really take um, time off work, so mm, kind mm. of went home. They gave me about a week off to, to you know, kind of arrange the funeral sure, things. Sure. But as soon as I got back, it's the 20 pages a day, let's go. And you got all these emotions, you know, boiling up inside you, as well as having to obviously pack those away mm. and be true to the character. It was a very, very challenging um, um, time for me. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. But I'm glad I got through it. I think I think my family... Um, was very supportive and my dad was a pastor so we got a lot of um, support from the church mm. uh, which was yeah really great how do you show up for your mom when she loses her life partner oh man I, don't, I still don't know to this day mm. I still don't know to this day man I try I try you know where I can support try to call speak to her but mm. it's 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 something you can't fathom man that's like and, 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 it's, yeah. and it's a void you'll never fill yeah no I, I can't I mean she was in love with this guy before I was there exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. So, you know and they go way back they got memories they got mm. you know, all these mm. all these mm. moments so for me it's something yeah it's mm. it's it's yeah her and, and, how, and how's mom now I mean she's doing better but yeah. uh, I don't know if one can ever fully recover from something mm. like that but mm. um, she's definitely doing better she, she's living her best life um, she's taken over uh, the church now which is great and I mm. think they're working on um, raising funds for a building project now. I, I was going to say, so what are we building? Every yeah, church yeah, yeah. is a building project. <laughs> no, they, they are. They are there is. But my mother, she, she sent me the drawings the other day. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually quite a beautiful thing. But yeah, no, in, in typical church f- fashion, you've got to have you know, a form of, of real estate in place for, for people to worship. So they're busy working on that right now. So uh, how's Pastor Mom going to use her famous son to raise funds? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because you know it's coming. Yeah, yeah. That conversation has to, and worse, I'm famous in KZN, where we are. So we'll see. I mean, but if people are, if people want to want to come and they touch, please pull up. But hey, I don't know. Yeah, where's the church? Maybe we can... It's going to be in Bangani. Sure. Um, yeah, in my, in my small town. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to raise funds for things. <laughs> I'm trying to raise funds for a movie I'm doing now, and it's also it's the first time I'm actually um, stepping into those spaces, and yeah. I realize, man, your rich people are not very easy to appease. <laughs> it just, you know, but I understand it be so. People work very hard for their sure. money and their resources, and for them to commit them to, to yeah. anything, it has to obviously make sense to them. So I'm being shouted at, as you can see. Ah. So don't think I'm chasing you out. No, no, no. Apparently no. our time is up. It's that time. Well, we're going to start putting her picture up. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I talk to her about I'm being shouted at, we must put up her picture so people can see the devil. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Kels. My dude. Yes, sir. You kick ass. Thank you very much. Uh, like I said, I saw you canoeing and I was like, this kid is hot. He kicks ass. He's talented and I'd love to see him do bigger and better things. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's exactly what you're doing. Thank you. Um, I, I think the sky, in fact, is not really a limit for you. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm certain you will be... Um, a, a right up there. Yeah, um, no, and there's a few other th- twists now in the story that people don't know. Yes. Uh, I'm moving into music. Um, You're a drummer. 
Yeah, yeah, I've been a drummer longer than... Yeah, you've than, been a drummer since you were a kid. Yeah, then I've been an actor, so it's, it's wild. So I'm moving into the music space as a performing artist, so a lot of people can expect that. Uh, watch out on my social media platforms for that kind of rebrand. Well, I'm not what, leaving acting. What kind, just, of, what kind of music are you making? Uh, I don't want to sound like that artist, but everything. Like, okay. Because I've played in bands, we've played, I've played from reggae bands to heavy metal yes, to rock yes, to yes. whatever. So I've got ranging from Maskandi, Afro Beats, my piano. I'm literally making a song for everybody. So there's no excuse. Everybody should have one of my songs in their playlist at some point. In Can I add one more song you must do? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> I've actually got a similar song. Boom, boom, boom. I've got a similar boom, song. Boom. I wish I could use that sample, but hey, Mousy Choice will fire me. No, they won't. They <laughs> no, won't. they'll fight me. Oh, BBC, I don't know. No, There's, no. Clearing samples is always... No, clear the sample, my dog. Don't you know who the hell you are, dog? I do, actually. Oh, Let me go. This guy. That's my next song. Pick up the phone, dog. Let's you know, go. They'll make it happen. Let's go. Lamohang, thank you so much, my dude. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, we'll continue to watch your star um, rise and um, you wow audiences and kick ass and tell our stories and hopefully one day tell stories on your own terms. Yes, sir. Thank With you. a big budget. Yes, sir. No, uh, very To the universe. I hope you're listening. No, we're coming. <laughs> we're coming. We're coming for Avatar. We're going to do African Avatar. Absolutely. Trust. Ladies and gentlemen, Lemohan Zipa is about to leave the building. Thank you for tuning in to Wow, What a Week. We've had someone who grew up in a dusty corner of a big city to entertain people from all over. Someone who learned from her parents to forge a path of her own and look great while doing it. And someone who, while playing notable roles on screen, is becoming a notable character on his own. Hopefully you've picked up inspiration in some way from today's show. So here's wishing you some intelligent exploration and a wow week ahead. Shout out to all of our guests. Shout out to Amp Studios for hosting us. Africa Podcast Network, Pezulu Works for the Cinematography, our audio imaging uh, engineer, Otis the Flo Fraser, and our guests, Dylan Oliphant, Tsiho Manche, Lemohang Zipa, our creative director, Kuvesh Mohan, and our show producer, Gilles Omudisa King. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Have a great week, in spite of yourselves.